Alabama beat LSU. This was a fantastic game. I mean, you talk about an offensive explosion. Jalen Dan- Jaden Daniels and Jalen Miro were absolutely lights out in this game. This was Jalen Miro's coming out performance. And this has to be the best game that he's ever played being the starting quarterback for the Crimson Tide. Like, the biggest knock on Jalen Miro has been his passing. Well, he had an incredible display of passing in this game. Outside of that missed throw to Isaiah Bond, which should have been a touchdown, but he just overthrew it, he had a fantastic performance. Now, he had four rushing touchdowns in this game. So, obviously, everybody's going to talk about how great of an athlete he is. But one thing that doesn't get talked about enough with Jalen Milrow is that he's a pretty good deep ball thrower. He doesn't hesitate to push the football downfield. And LSU, Jaden Daniels, man, this dude is one of my favorite players in all of college football. I feel like he doesn't get enough talk when it comes to being in a Heisman discussion. I definitely believe he should be a Heisman finalist. And that hit by Dallas Turner should have been fucking targeted. I know you Bama fans are going to disagree with it, but he got clobbered, man. And it was straight directly to the top of his helmet, man. Right in the chin. That's targeting at his feet. And they didn't call it. He didn't get ejected. That blew me. And if you're a Bama fan, it's okay to root for your team. But you also should be fair. And if you aren't going to say that that's targeting, then you're just being a little bit too biased. All right? Be fair. Dallas Turner should have got called for targeting in that game for that hit on Jaden Daniels, and he should have got ejected. That was egregious, man. And they sitting here talking to Jaden Daniels, asking him if he's all right. He didn't look all right to me. There's a reason why he had to go and hit that tent. And as soon as Gunnar Gunner Nussmeyer came out there, or Garrett Nussmeyer, excuse me, came out there and replaced the Jaden Daniels, I flipped the television to Washington and USC because I knew the game was over from there. And prior to that play happening, Jaden Daniels had through an interception. You see, the reason why I picked Alabama to win this game was because, for one, they're playing at home. I don't know why people continue to pick against Alabama when they're playing in Tuscaloosa. Texas is a great team. You just can't beat Alabama being a good team like how LSU is. To beat Alabama, you have to be a truly great team. You have to be able to play complimentary football if you want to walk out of Tuscaloosa with the win. It was disrespectful to pick against Alabama in this game, in my opinion, because LSU has one of the worst defenses in all of college football. And you just knew whenever Alabama's defense was able to get a stop, that's when this game was going to go in Alabama's favor. The only way LSU is going to be able to win this game is if they could be able to score on every single possession or if their defense could get them a couple of stops. And at one point in the second half, this defense, they might as well not have been on the field because Jalen Milroy and company were carving up this defense on the ground, via the air. It's funny how LSU takes so much pride in calling themselves DBU when the defensive backs that they got on this year's team look awful. This is the worst secondary that I've ever seen LSU ever have. I mean, they couldn't stop a nosebleed in the second half. Jalen Milrow, you would have thought that he was looking like damn Tom Brady out there the way he was throwing that rock. Jalen Milrow, after this performance, man, maybe he deserves to be in the Heisman conversation now. Because this Alabama offense, they're rolling. And it's really scary to think that Alabama has now started to figure things out offensively. It's funny how the biggest weakness for Alabama coming into this season was the quarterback position. And people thought that the quarterback position was going to be a big reason why Alabama was going to win or lose, excuse me, two or more games. But they only have one loss. And that one loss came early in the season to a great Texas team. Alabama people, we need to start viewing this team as a national championship contender again. This defense is all world. Yes, they gave up 28 points to LSU, but this is an LSU offense that's been hanging 40 and 50 burgers on teams with ease. Their secondary gave up a couple of big plays. You had that big touchdown to Malik to Malik Neighbors really early in this game. 
You see, that's kind of my biggest pet peeve with this Alabama defense. They are really talented, and they are one of the best five defenses in the nation, in my opinion, but they do have a tendency to get beat over the top more times than often, more times than what you would like. And Nick Saban was really irate over it, as he should be, because there's too many times where this defense gets beat over the top. It doesn't happen every single possession, but in certain moments, like in this one, this game, you know, this secondary kind of has a tendency to look in the backfield and they can give up some big plays. Now, they don't give it up consistently, Drive after drive. It's not like a big glaring issue, but against Tennessee, they had a similar play where they gave up to Squirrel White where they got beat over the top. Big plays is just something that Alabama secondary just has a tendency to give up a couple of times during matchups. But outside of that, this front seven is immaculate. This defensive line is really good. It's really hard to convert and third and short or fourth and short on this Alabama defensive front. They had a really big stop on fourth and one early. It was a big pass breakup by number 13. And against Tennessee, they had a couple of big stops when Tennessee was trying to run design quarterback runs with Joel Milton. And Joel Milton is a really big dude. He's like 6'5", 240 pounds. And Alabama was stopping him on fourth and one and fourth and, and, fourth and inches. This is one of the best defenses that Alabama has had under Nick Saban in a very long time. This is a championship caliber defense. And with this offense now starting to, you know, hit their stride, you definitely need to start putting Alabama right back in that championship discussion. And I think Georgia, if they go up against Alabama in the SEC championship game, they probably are going to lose that game because Alabama looks like the way better team up front than what Georgia is. And now with Alabama having competent quarterback play now, we can now fully say that Jalen Milrow is that dude at quarterback. He's good enough to dissect that Kirby Smart defense because that Kirby Smart defense isn't the same historically great defense that we've seen in 2022 and 2021. Alabama, to me right now, looks like a way better team than Georgia, even though Georgia is undefeated right now. And you go back and you look at that Auburn game, and you look at this Missouri game. Georgia looks extremely vulnerable. Alabama, they go up against Ole Miss, and they held them to 10 points. They go up against Tennessee, and they shut them out entirely in the second half of that game. I think Georgia right now is in a little bit of trouble. In terms of their opportunity to be able to three-peat. Now, I still believe that Georgia is going to three-peat again. Or I believe that they're going to win the national championship again and complete their three-peat hopes. But right now, I'm a little concerned about my prediction. I picked Georgia to win it all. But right now, I think Alabama also deserves to be in the mix. We keep giving a lot of credit to Oregon, despite the fact that they lost to Washington and how people keep saying nobody should want to play Oregon, but I don't think anybody should want to play Alabama. Now Jalen Milrow is now starting to show growth as a passer, and we know how scary he is as a runner. I mean, the dude went for over 100 plus and four touchdowns on the ground and also had a perfect display of passing in this game. That's scary. Jalen Milrow being able to put it all together should scare a lot of teams. And the rest of Alabama's schedule is pretty easy. Although I'm not going to overlook them going up against Hugh Freeze in Auburn because we know Hugh Freeze is the upset master. But they got Kentucky up next. They got Auburn coming up. I like Alabama to win out, make it to the SEC championship game, and then we'll see what happens from that point forward. But right now, if I had to make a prediction between who I felt was going to win this conference, I probably would go with Alabama. But I still believe if Georgia wins out with how tough the remainder of the November stretch is, even if they do suffer one loss to Alabama in the championship game, I still think that Georgia gets in with one loss. It's Georgia, and plus they are going to play Missouri. If they beat Ole Miss and they beat Tennessee, that's a tough, that's a really tough schedule, and those are really good wins. I don't think the committee leaves out a one-loss Georgia if that one loss occurs in the SEC championship game. I definitely think that we could see two teams in the SEC, we could see two teams from the SEC and the college football playoffs this year. 
Alabama is playing some really good football. And if you're going to talk about Oregon being a team that nobody wants to play, I think Alabama should also be in that discussion also. I wouldn't want to play these fools neither, especially with Jalen Milrow hitting his stride. Alabama beats LSU 42-28. to Like I told you guys all week long, LSU wasn't going to have a chance at beating Alabama with how bad that defense has been. They can't stop the run. They can't stop the pass. They can't get off the field in third down situations. They can't get stops in the red zone. And if you want to beat Alabama and Tuscaloosa, you got to be a complete team. Texas is a complete team. Like we talked about earlier, their defense helped guide them to the win despite their offense going ice cold in the second half with a backup quarterback. That shows you that Texas is a complete football team. They got explosive offense when Quinn U.S. is really healthy, and they got a great defense. Those are the kind of teams that can beat Alabama and Tuscaloosa. You're not going to beat Alabama being one-dimensional, being a one-trick pony where you got to score 40 to win. With how great this defense was going to play in this game, there was no way I felt LSU was going to win this ball game, and I put money on this. I put a lot of money on this. I put at least 100 on Alabama being able to win this game outright and cover. That's how confident I was about this game. Like, if you have to ask me my confidence level about Alabama being able to beat LSU 1 through 5, I would tell you 100 out of 5. If you don't have a great defense, even with how great your offense is, I don't get how you could beat Alabama and Tuscaloosa. Even if you do have concerns about the consistency of this offense. You know that Alabama's defense can get a few stops. Can LSU's defense get a few stops? Apparently not. And that's why the final score was the way that it was. And before any of you LSU fans come at me and you say, well, Jaden Daniels never got injured, bro. The game was pretty much in Alabama's favor when he got injured. Even before he got injured. The momentum was already tilting in the Crimson Tide's favor. 